Hey everybody, welcome to How To Videos with Dr. Amy Gates. This video is going to focus on what to do when you first get SPSS installed on your computer. And the goal of this video is to help you make sure that you can open up SPSS, just type in a little bit of data, try out some different statistical methods, just to make sure that SPSS is up and running and ready to go. This is something you want to do before the first day of class. Now remember, before you can use this video, you want to make sure that you've already installed SPSS onto your computer. And remember we talked about that there were two methods. You could either download SPSS from the internet, or you can order it in the form of a CD and install it on your computer using that CD. If you're wondering how to get SPSS, keep a lookout for the other how-to video on how to get SPSS, the textbook, and other class materials. All right, let's get started. Let's assume that you have SPSS already installed on your computer, either from the internet or from the CD, and you want to know, well, what's the next step? How can I make sure that SPSS is up and running properly? The first thing you want to do is go to your Start menu. Now, some people have Macintosh computers, and each operating system is a little bit different. So if your method looks a little different than mine, that's okay. No need to panic. What you want to do here is either see if SPSS is already listed as an option on your Start menu, which will be the case in many, in, for many students. You notice that I have version 19. You're probably going to have a newer version, but that's no, not a problem. If you don't see it here, you can always search for SPSS by typing it into any of your search options and it will come up and you can see if you have any SPSS files, it'll show those as well. But what you're going to notice is that SPSS has this kind of round light blue ball that has a sigma and an alpha in it and that's really one of the best ways to find it. So your first step is to figure out where is your SPSS? Where did you save it? Where is it located? If when you click the start menu, it doesn't show up right here amongst your start options like mine does, maybe drag it over once you find it onto this area so that it's easy to open in the future. Once you find SPSS, you just want to click it so that it opens up on your computer. That's your first step in making sure that SPSS is properly installed on your computer. Now you can see the edge of this, and I'm going to scoot this box over so you can see this better as well. Whenever you open SPSS directly, it'll show you any SPSS files you might have on your computer. In your case, you may not have any files yet because you've got to get those from the classroom or you can create your own. You can run a tutorial if you want to to learn more. And you can also choose to type in data right into SPSS. And that's what we're going to do today just to make sure that it's running properly. So I'm going to choose Type in Data and I'm going to click OK. And what that does is it gives us this nice little SPSS blank screen to work with. Now SPSS is not the type of program where you can just start typing. Before you can create data, you have to define your variables. And this is of course something we're going to learn in our classroom. But if you go to the bottom and you choose Variable View, you can create variables. Well, I'm going to create one called Student Number. Notice I didn't put any spaces. I'm going to click next to it, which fills out all this information. I don't need two decimals in my student number, so I'll click here and get rid of those. And then for my second variable, I'm going to choose something called student age. And again, I'll click over here in the blank spot, get rid of the decimal places. And now I have defined two variables. One's called student number and one's called student age. And I've done this in the variable view slot. And just work alongside with me because you'll be able to do this even though it's very new. This is a good first step. Once you've created these two variables, and again, there's no spaces in my variable names, I'm going to click on Data View. Now, the two new variables that I've created are right here in SPSS for me. So now, let's say I have a bunch of students. I'm going to use really easy numbers, like I have student 1 and student 2 and student 3, student 4, student 5, and so on. 
And now let's make up some, some ages. Let's say my first student is 19, my second student is 34, my third student is 23, my fourth student is 56, and my fifth student is 43. All right, now I have some data that I can use to try out SPSS. Let's do a couple of simple operations. Let's choose Analyze at the top, and then choose Descriptive Statistics, and then Frequencies. And just work along with me, because again, this is new, and it's just to make sure that your SPS is working properly. When you choose Frequencies, you can actually use both of your variables. I'm going to select this variable first. I'm going to use my arrow to move it over here. And I'm going to choose the other variable, too, and move that one over. So student age and student number are both here. Now I'm going to click on Statistics. I want SPSS to give me the mean, the median, the mode, the standard deviation, and the variance for my variables. So I'll click Continue. Now I'm going to click on Charts. I want SPSS to build me pie charts of my variables as well. So I'll click Continue, and then I'll click OK. And here's the magic of SPSS. It does all the hard work for you, and it calculates all of your statistics. Remember, we asked for the mean, the median, the mode, the standard deviation, and the variance. And we have it for the student age and also the student number, which doesn't really mean a lot. And we can see that the average age of our students are 35, the median is 34, and so on. If I scroll down further, I can see that SPSS has created me a very beautiful pie chart. And let's actually scroll down to the student age pie chart. And it's color-coded all the different ages. Now finally, let's say I want to take this image and I want to cut it out of this area and paste it into a Word document. Well, if I click my right mouse button, I can choose something called Copy Special. I can copy this as an image and click OK. Now I have it copied. And if I open up a brand new Word document, which I'm going to do right now, I can again right click in my Word document and I can paste this right in there. And that's how I can grab images right out of SPSS and paste them into my Word documents like for my projects. Keep in the back of your mind that in the discussion area, you cannot paste in images. So you'll have to attach them in the form of a Word document, just like this. All right, so what did we do so far? Well, we were able to find SPSS on our computer. We were able to open it up, create some new variables, fill in some data for those variables, and then do some descriptive statistics. If you're able to do all this, that means that your SPSS is up and running perfectly and you are ready to go. If you have any trouble with this, try it a couple of times because when things are new, they can be pretty complicated. But if you're having technical issues, that's when you want to look in the course for the announcement about who to contact if you're having technical problems. Do that right away because we use SPSS for every assignment in our class. Thanks for joining me.